The Doof, the goofy beaver Pokemon with awful stats and no hope of ever being useful. So I decided to see if it was possible to beat all of Pokemon Legends Arceus with just one single Bidoof. Could a Pokemon this week conquer all of Pursui by itself? And does Bidoof actually have some hidden godly power? Well, let's find out. We meet God and wake up in Hisui with one goal. Find my Bidoof. The professor gives us a choice of starter Pokemon and I don't know, it's a tough one. Who would you pick? Like for Bidoof, subscribe for Bidoof, or comment for Bidoof. Now we can catch a Bidoof straight away, but this isn't the Bidoof that I want. The one I want has sparkles. So I decided to hunt a shiny Bidoof and this was a terrible idea. I was playing on full shiny odds and must have seen thousands of those little beavers. The hours rolled by and I was starting to have my doubts until just after the seven hour mark, this happened. Oh, we got it. There it is. Hang on. Now I have to make sure I catch it. Let's not be stupid here. There's our golden boy right there. The chosen one. All right, eat the berry. All right, get in the ball. Stay in the ball. Boom, there it is. Now we had our champion. This little guy was the chosen one. I gave him the perfect nickname... Bidoof. While we still need to catch other Pokemon to progress the story, we can only use Bidoof in our party, so everything else that we catch will be grinded down into Grit Rocks to power up our thick beaver. But after getting our one-star trainer rank, it's time for Bidoof's debut fight. Solo run battles in this game are way harder than in previous titles. The new turn system means that you take more hits, and if you raise your stats, the boosts wear off after a few turns. But that will come up later. For now though, Ray only has a Pikachu, so a few tackles from our buck-toothed hero give us a pretty quick win. Although the next fight gave me way more trouble. Mai's Munchlax is much stronger than Bidoof, and since we have the same moves, our Bidoof was quickly slapped around. Our first loss. But after getting some more levels on my Bidoof, I lost again. Okay, this is only the third battle of the game and I'm already struggling. How are we even gonna stand a chance against a full team of stronger Pokemon? Well, that's a problem for future Keegan. For now, after losing many, many times, I got Bidoof to level 17 and now my tackles finally hit hard enough to remove Munchlax. Next up is the Alpha Krigatoon. He's less of a problem because Beedoof knows Rollout, which hits Krikatoon for super effective damage, and a few of these give us the win. Weirdeer comes looking for a fight, but runs away like a coward when it sees the monstrous power of my Beedoof. Adaman and Irida argue about whose god is best, but you fools, there's only one real god around these parts. Our next mission is to stop the enraged Cleavor and- wait, are you getting bigger? No, no, I think my eyes are just playing tricks on me. Little Leanne tries to stop Bidoof's wrath, but all it takes is a few tackles to put his Gumi in its place. By playing the sacred, forbidden tune, Weedy is seduced by Bidoof, allowing us to ride it, which is really useful as Bidoof's chunky little frame isn't built for long distance walks. Irida tries to stop us too, but like an Autobot, we roll out all over her Glaceon for a quick win. Next up is the first Noble Lord Cleavor, and the good news is that we don't have to actually beat it with Bidoof. So after it slammed my Bidoof, I took over, and with some pro gamer movement, I won the food fight, and Cleavor had been calmed by the beauty of Bidoof. Now that's one damn fine looking PC box. Once I get the three star trainer rank, Bidoof can learn some extra moves from the tutor. These are going to be crucial in this run as we really need the type coverage on Bidoof. Before we can leave town, we're ambushed by Ray and this is the first time that we're going up against more than one Pokemon. And with a new turn system in this game, soloing multiple Pokemon is way harder than usual. As proof of this, after removing Mime Jr. with a crunch, Bidoof falls just short of taking Pikachu out and sadly, Bidoof fell. But on my next try, I use Mime Jr. to begin charging rollout. This approach is slower to KO the Mime Jr., but it means that when Pikachu comes out, we've charged up enough rollouts to take it down in one shot, much smoother. This gives us access to the Crimson My Lands, and it's here that I meet one of the most despicable, disgusting people I've ever seen, Kalaba, who took the coward approach and evolved her Bidoof. <laughs> You make me sick. Volo wants to test our strength and sends out a teeny tiny little egg who doesn't stand a chance against my almighty O. Oh. This Togepi is really annoying with its calm mind and draining kiss combo. So after losing a few more times, I tweaked Bidoof's moveset and stepped up to Volo once more. I've got Iron Tail now, which is super effective and obliterates Togepi in one turn. Side note, I don't know why Bidoof can even learn Iron Tail. Its tail is just these balls on its butt. Anyway, next is Volo's Gibble, who hits me with two bulldozers in a row. 
row. But Bidoof tanks it, and on the next turn, one four times effective Icy Wind turns Gibble into a snow cone. I'm glad that's over, but if I had trouble with those two Pokemon, what would I be able to do against Volo's full team? For now though, we had another problem. The Misfortune sisters stole some old rock. I have no idea why they want it, but it's our job to get it back. But to do that, we need to defeat Coin's Toxicroak. This guy is a problem because Bidoof is weak to fighting types. A Rock Smash crushes Bidoof for a big chunk of health. But by using Icy Wind, I'm able to move two turns in a row. So with an Iron Tail to follow it up, we're surprisingly able to take Toxicroak down on our very first try. So we get the stone tablet back. Kalaba translates the sacred text for us, and it's weird because it actually says, subscribe to my YouTube channel or Bidoof will curse you. So strange, right? And as thanks for our heroic work, we're thrown into a sludge pit to battle with Ursa Luna. This guy is a demon. It's basically Bidoof, just bigger, stronger, faster, and with better moves. Yep, totally an even matchup. Time and time again, I got demolished by this stupid bear. Seriously, I lost like 20 times. I only really stood a chance once Bidoof was a higher level, and even then it was tough. But eventually, Bidoof barely survived a second slash on only one HP. This allowed me to land a third icy wind, just giving me the win, but man, that was tough. That Bidoof is really strong. Yeah, I wish I was as cool and as handsome as him. <laughs> Shut up, B-Barrel, you're an abomination. And what is this clinging to Ursa Luna's coat? It seems like some kind of powder. Whoa, Ursa Luna, what are you been up to? Arazu's missing, but she smells so bad that we're able to track her down using only her stench. Impressive. Bidoof is so strong that he can crush these boulders without even touching them. My god, what a monster. With that, now we can tackle the next noble, Lilligant. This one's not too bad though. I can dodge its attacks pretty easily, and Bidoof can take it down with two consecutive icy winds. Before long, Lilligant had been seduced by Bidoof and was quelled. Kalava shares some wisdom about not trying to do everything by yourself, which isn't really helpful since this is a solo run. That's kind of the point. Ah, the fresh new worshippers of Beedoof have arrived. I changed my outfit, so now I have a big stylish Beedoof bursting out the side of my head. Very fashionable. Okay, I swear you weren't this big the first time we met, but but that's that's not possible. I'm probably just tired. Our next mission brings us to the Cobalt Coastlands, but straight away, Irida stops us with her tail? She forces us to battle, and this is the first time that we have to take on two Pokemon at once. Although, one Iron Tail is enough to crush her Glaceon into ice cubes. Bidoof gets really low, but Arrest heals me back up, with a few Rock Smashes finishing off the other Eevee. Irida gets emotional and confesses that this land has no noble lord. Ah, gotcha. You want Bidoof to rule over the coastlands. Got it. Uh, no, that's not what I- Say no more. We'll take good care of the coastlands. And as the new ruler, we had some business to take care of. We banished Polina for looking too sus, and evicted Escan the bum for not paying his rent on time. But then, the Misfortune sisters stole a Growlithe, and that's not gonna fly in my town. So I gave chase on my patrol fish? before reaching the offenders on Armpit Island. This is where the fun stops, because we have to take on the Misfortune Sisters all back to back. My one little Bidoof against their four Pokemon. Needless to say, I quickly got slapped around, not even making it past Clover on my first attempt. So it was back to the drawing board. Bringing Bidoof to level 45 lets me get past the Abomasnow with an Iron Tail, but I still struggle against the Toxicroak. Even on my furthest attempt where I made it to Gengar, it's so strong and fast that it just decimated my Bidoof with two Venishocks. This was easily my biggest challenge yet. New plan. After raising my research rank to 6, Zisu will teach Aqua Tail to Bidoof. Again, I don't know how that stubby little tail does anything, but whatever. Even with these improvements, it still wasn't easy. I got slapped around time and time again while trying to figure out the best approach. I had a strategy that I knew could work, but I needed a lot to go my way. I started making it to Gengar more often, but with a single strong style Venishock being able to take Bidoof out, I really didn't have much of a chance. That is, until this run. So the plan is to lead Bidoof and immediately remove a Bomber Snow with an Iron Tail. I use strong style for the accuracy boost, and there's no drawback of slower movement speed since each of the Misfortune Sisters are considered separate battles. Coin's Toxicroak quickly hits me with a Poison Jab, which is problematic because I need to be at full health against Gengar. So I heal up with Rest. Using Agile Style for this gives me another attack, but a lot of attempts died here because Bidoof was too drowsy to move. Although that wasn't the case this time, and a strong style Iron Tail is enough to finish Toxicroak. 
Last is Charm and her ride on who I aqua tail into oblivion. But then Gengar comes out and this whole attempt relies on Hypnosis missing. Most of the time it didn't, but this was a blessed run with Hypnosis missing on turn one. Although Gengar does land it on the next one. But Bidoof, being the absolute stallion that he is, fights through the drowsiness to land a strong style crunch, finally giving us the win in what was our biggest challenge yet. This honestly took hours and I was so relieved, but things would get much worse later on. For now, we had the noble Arcanine to deal with. He's trying to overthrow Bidoof as the lord of the land, but an Aqua Tail quickly puts Arcanine in its place. From there, I hit it square in the face with enough bombs to calm that puppy down. You did well on your mission in the Cobalt Coastlands. Yep, I really turned that place around. It's thriving now. Badoof's next mission was to conquer the Coronet Highlands. But before that, Adaman stops us for a battle. Although we're pretty high leveled after the Misfortune Sisters gauntlet, so Badoof quickly removes Leafeon with an Ice Beam, and Eevee went down with an Iron Tail. Too easy. While traveling with Ingo, we're unfortunate enough to come across the human stain known as Melly. He tries to stop us with his big skunk in a one-on-one. -on -one. Badoof does take a big chunk of damage, but an Agile-style Iron Tail gives me two consecutive turns, with another Iron Tail finishing off the job. Volo then asks us if we remember what we saw before we fell through the rift. Yeah, I saw a divine angel and my god it was beautiful. Our next battle is against Ingo himself, and this one is not easy. He's got three Pokemon, the first of which is a fighting type. Machoke does huge damage with a bullet punch and double edge, although it falls to its own recoil in the process. An ice beam quickly turns Tangela into frozen spaghetti, and Ingo was down to his last Pokemon. But Gliscor is tough. However, Beedoof just survived a poison jab, and one more ice beam gives us the win. And as a reward, now we can ride on... <laughs> Melly's back and stinkier than ever because in this battle we have to take on three Pokemon at once and honestly I got slapped around. Bidoof just isn't bulky enough to handle the onslaught of so many attacks in a row. But through lots of trial and error, eventually I found a way that gives me a chance, although it needs a lot of luck to go my way. So Skuntank is the biggest problem and I need to get rid of it ASAP. It does big damage with a poison jab, but by using an agile style swords dance, I can make sure that Bidoof gets an attack boost and gets to move again before Skuntank. Since Skuntank is pretty bulky, it takes a boosted double edge from Bidoof to finish it off in one turn. Problem is, that does huge recoil damage and now Melly's other Pokemon get to attack. Venishock from Skaroopy puts me at low health and this is where I need some luck. Not only do I need Zubat to go for Hypnosis, but I also need to not be drowsy on the next turn. On this attempt, that's exactly what happened and Bidoof was able to recover some health with rest. Skaroopy's the bigger threat of the two, so I once again need to land my attack through drowsiness with an Ice Beam taking it down. Bidoof barely survives a gust from Zubat and after recovering more health with rest, one more Ice Beam just gives me the win. So we embarrassed Melly by soloing him with one Bidoof. We put him in his place, which is the trash where he belongs. This clears us to take on the giant angry nut and his little balls. Most of this battle is me running for my life, dodging explosions like it's a Michael Bay movie. Bidoof manages to get the kill with a single Ice Beam, and from here, I run rings around Electrode, chipping it down until it finally mellows out. It somehow hands me a plate despite not having any limbs, so I guess it just spat it at me. Uh, thanks. After beating up Ray and reminding him of Bidoof's destructive power, it was time for Bidoof's reign of terror to spread to the Alabaster Icelands. Most Pokemon would find this freezing, but Bidoof, as the apex specimen, has a thick layer of chubbiness to keep it warm. He truly is the pinnacle of beauty and evolution. Okay, Bidoof, I know I said that you were getting bigger before, but I was wrong and I apologize. You're still exactly the same size as when we met. This guy with the shredded physique and anger management issues is Bidoof's next victim. Garrick uses two ice type Pokemon, so a strong style Iron Tail immediately slaps Glalie to an early grave. His Frostlass is a much lower level, and all it takes is one crunch to finish it off and give us another win. The puzzles of Snowpoint Temple are no match for Bidoof's giant brain, opening them with sheer will. But next up is another three-on-one battle, this time against Sabi, who has some powerful Pokemon. And my first attempt did not last long. They ganged up on Bidoof and slapped me around. Attempt 2 ended the same, but by now I'd figured out a plan. Turn 1, take advantage of Rhyperia's low special defense by KOing it with Ice Beam. For some reason, Sabi's Pokemon both get two attacks in a row. This gets Bidoof really low, so I take a turn to heal up with rest. 
Through drowsiness, I land an aqua tail onto Magmorta. From here, it's a one-on-one -on -one with Electrovire falling a few turns later. Badoof is out here just clutching these 3v1s. Braviary, on the other hand, is much easier to handle, with a few super effective crunches from Badoof's buck teeth getting the job done. Now we can fly, but at this point, I'm convinced Badoof could probably fly too if he tried. This clears us to take on the final Noble Lord. Now, Avalug is a big boy, but we've got a big Badoof. Its attacks aren't too hard to dodge, so I throw a bunch of pies in its face. It does take my Bidoof out, but in an act of vengeance, with my heart on my sleeve and a Bidoof strapped to my forehead, I slay the beast with my own bare hands. Dinner, anyone? Is Keegan some kind of monster in disguise? Well, I'm not, but Bidoof might be a different story. If you haven't played Legends Arceus yet, this is the part of the game where the sky explodes, Kamado decides that I'm pretty sus and kicks me out of the village. Not like Bidoof cares. I mean, can he even feel emotions? We take on the Lake Trio Trials, but these are all one-on-one -on -one battles, so Bidoof clears these pretty easily. The puzzles would be hard for a normal Pokemon, but Bidoof is so big-brained that these puzzles are a breeze. Before long, we had our giant red string of candy. But as we headed up Mount Coronet in pursuit of Kamado, ahead of us would be by far our biggest challenge yet. Benny, or as I now call him, the Reaper. Benny is a problem. His Sneasler is a beast, and it knows close combat, which just kills Bidoof instantly. He also has Gallade, another deadly fighting type that decimates us with Drain Punch. And on top of that, he's got two more strong Pokemon in Gardevoir and Miss Magius. Basically, he's bad news. It became clear very quickly that level 70 just wasn't going to cut it. And neither was level 80 or level 90. With Bidoof at level 100, this was as strong as our little beaver was going to get. And even then, I was still getting slapped around. Miss Magius always outspeeds me and does decent damage on turn one. I can take it out with a crunch, but when Sneasler comes out, I just die instantly to a strong style close combat. So what can we do? Well, if I take out Miss Magius with an agile style crunch, the AI will opt for a regular close combat, which Bidoof just survives. And since it's pretty frail, one Aqua Tail can take Sneasler out. But with Bidoof's HP so low, Gallade just ends me with Drain Punch. And that's when I was lucky. Most of the time, I would just straight up lose to Sneasler. I started to think that this run just wasn't possible until this attempt. I'd made it to Gallade with Bidoof in bad shape. And then the AI did something strange. It went for Swords Dance, which meant that Bidoof could take Gallade out. For the first time, I made it to Gardevoir, but was quickly crushed by Psychic. Although, it gave me hope. See, Gallade could have killed me with Drain Punch, but instead used a stat-boosting move. And Gardevoir has Calm Mind in its moveset, which made me think, maybe Gardevoir also had a chance to raise its stats instead of going for the KO. But keep in mind that on top of this, I needed the luck to go my way for literally every turn of this battle to even make it to Gardevoir. It was so unlikely to happen. Time and time again, I was slaughtered mercilessly by Benny. But I still believed in our boy Bidoof. And so, the hours rolled by until... Turn 1. Bidoof finishes Miss Magius with an agile crunch. Sneasler close combats, and Bidoof barely hangs on. Sneasler then goes down to one Iron Tail, which has a 25% chance to miss. For a reason that I still don't understand, Gallade swords dances and falls to a single Shadow Ball. Luckily, Gardevoir sets up Calm Mind, and Bidoof lands a strong style Iron Tail to finally give me the win in what was by far the most grueling battle of the run so far. Benny, I hate you so, so much. I was relieved, but that wore off in about about 10 seconds, because as soon as we get past Benny, Kamado is waiting and he also has four Pokemon, except his team isn't as bad as Benny's. A few super effective crunches take care of Braviary, with Snorlax suffering the same fate. Golem does big damage with Double Edge, but Rest gives me some recovery. From here, an Aqua Tail cleans up Golem, and a Strong Style Iron Tail takes care of Clefable. So we managed to beat Kamado on the first try, which is insane. Like a good little boy, Kamado gets on his knees and pays his respect to our Lord and Savior Bidoof. Don't worry, Commander, we've got the red chain! Oh. Palkia might be a god, but god shmod, we have a Bidoof. And Bidoof quickly slapped Palkia around to remind it who's really in charge around here. Okay, so the game does force me to catch it, but once we do, Dialga also turns up, probably to surrender peacefully because it doesn't want to face the wrath of Bidoof. But like a coward, Kamado forces us to retreat. In a rematch with Charm, Bidoof quickly takes care of Rhydon with Aqua Tail and Gengar with Crunch. We craft the Origin Ball and head back towards Spear Pillar. The game forces us to bring a disgust Disgusting, weak, non Bidoof Pokemon, which honestly utterly sickens me. We make it to the summit, and Dialga tries to blast me, but my trusty Bidoof shield protects me. The fight against Origin Dialga is 
super easy, and Beedoof doesn't even get a chance to battle, which is probably safer for Dialga. We slap it around, shove it in the Origin Ball, and the day was saved. Or was it? Legends Arceus has one of the hardest post-game battles in all of Pokemon, so I wanted to see if one little Bidoof could really go all the way. But before that, we have to collect the remaining elemental plates, and part of this is a rematch with Kamado. He was pretty easy last time, but now he's stronger and has another Pokemon. To make matters worse, his new Pokemon is a fighting type with close combat, pretty much our worst nightmare. And straight away, it was obvious that this wasn't going to be as easy as last time. I can get past Golem pretty easily, but Heracross just rips me to shreds with close combat. And even if I'm lucky enough to get past Heracross, his Snorlax can clean me up with a huge Giga impact. So I failed over and over again while trying out different strategies. And even after I'd put together a solid strategy, I still needed everything to go my way. So I kept on losing until this attempt. Turn one, an agile style Aqua Tail brings Golem to low health and Kamado heals with a full restore. Then I take Golem down with a regular Aqua Tail on the following turn. It was important to use an agile style one first as now Kamado won't get two consecutive turns with Heracross. I need the AI to use Swords Dance first and then Pin Missile on the following turn. If it uses close combat on either of those, the attempt is dead. But this time I got lucky and two agile style Aqua Tails can finish Heracross with my HP still reasonably high. Badoof just tanks a Giga Impact and I've now got two turns up my sleeve. I use the first one to rest and recover HP and the other one to land an Agile Crunch. Since Giga Impact has such a low action speed, we repeat this cycle a few times. If I'm unable to move through drowsiness on both turns, then the run dies. But this time it worked out and once Snorlax's HP was in range, an Iron Tail finished it off. Now it gets really risky because if I'm drowsy on any of the remaining turns, I just simply lose. But on this run, Badoof fought through the drowsiness like a champ. A strong style Iron Tail spelt the end of Clefable, and one last strong style Crunch clipped the wings of Braviary. We embarrassed Kamado with a 5v1 Bidoof clutch, stole his fist plate, and reminded him that Bidoof is his new daddy. Job done. The rest of the plates aren't nearly as hard. We just have to catch some legendary Pokemon, which Bidoof does with ease, of course. Kogita gives us the final plate, with Volo and I now being bound for Spear Pillar. Uh, Keegan, was your Bidoof always this big? What do you mean? He's always been this big and handsome. But now, it was time for our biggest challenge of the run. Volo. His team is insane. It's an 8 versus 1. He's got some of the strongest Pokemon in the region and a powerful legendary Pokemon that I have to beat twice. And if that's not enough, his Lucario can destroy me with close combat and his Giratina knows Aura Sphere, a fighting move that can't miss. This fight is ridiculous even with a full team, let alone just one Bidoof. Unsurprisingly, I got destroyed over and over again. The furthest I got was taking out three of Volo's Pokemon, and I was really lucky to even make it that far. So if we wanted any chance of beating this, we'd need a war chest of items, healing, stat boosts, everything. Even then, it won't be easy because the stat boosts wear off in this game, and it's still an 8 versus 1. My strategy was to set up against Spiritomb with an Orcs Evasion, followed by Orcs Power Guard, which temporarily boosts both my attack and defense. After healing up, I can take Spiritomb down pretty easily. Lucario is always second, and if I'm lucky, it'll miss an attack. But if it doesn't, the defense boost allows Bidoof to live a bullet punch and close combat as long as neither of them crit. Assuming Bidoof survives, a boosted Aqua Tail has a chance to knock Lucario out in one shot. If all that goes my way, the rest of Volo's main team isn't too bad. I can reset my stat boosts against Roserade and finish it off with one crunch. An agile Aqua Tail can drown Arcanine, with Iron Tail slaughtering the Togekiss that follows. I need to be careful against Garchomp though. My stat boosts won't carry over to the Giratina battle, but my health will. So it's vital that I keep Bidoof at full health until Garchomp misses an attack. This opening will allow me to take it out while keeping Bidoof healthy for the final battle against the demon Giratina. On this run, I'd already been so lucky to make it this far, but against Giratina, all I could do was buy time by healing. As soon as I tried to land any damage, Bidoof would go down to Aura Sphere. Even with items, it seemed hopeless. It was so rare for me to even make it to Giratina, and when I did, I had no real strategy to deal with it. But then, I realized something. If all I could do against Giratina was stall, maybe I can make that work. All of a sudden, I had a plan. Now keep in mind, I have to actually make it to Giratina first, and that takes ages. So much can go wrong against Volo's main team, but eventually, I had a run that was going pretty well. Lucario missed an attack and went down clean. I was able to safely reset my stat boosts against Roserade, and the rest of the fight went well. With some luck against Garchomp, I took it down with Bidoof still at full health. 
Once again, it was time to take on Giratina, but this time with a new plan. I immediately take a big Aura Sphere. It's vital that I set up an Orc's Power Guard on this turn. If I don't, the AI will always finish me off with an Agile plus Strong Style combo on the following turn. With the boosts, I barely live a second Aura Sphere and can heal back up with a full restore. All this does is stall for time, but that's all that I need to do. See, Aura Sphere has a smaller PP in this game of just 10. That means if I can stall for 10 turns, then Giratina won't be able to use Aura Sphere anymore. But I take this a step further, because once Giratina is out of Aura Spheres, I also stall until it's out of Dragon Claw and Earth Power. Once it starts using Shadow Force, I know that it has nothing left that can hit me. This means I'm free to renew my stat buffs and bring Bidoof to full health before finishing Giratina with Crunch. This means that I'm as prepared as I possibly can be for Giratina's second phase. Its PP is reset and does big damage with Aura Sphere, but a boosted Agile Crunch returns the favor. Bidoof digs deep to just survive another Aura Sphere, and one final Strong Style Crunch is enough to send Giratina back to the depths of hell. Well, Bidoof, you actually did it. You beat all of Volo's eight Pokemon on your own. Wait, Bidoof, what, what's happening? Oh god, Bidoof, no! My god, what are you? What have you become? Where's my handsome little Bidoof? We can work this out, Bidoof. Now! Now! But it was no use. Bidoof had become too powerful and he'd lost his mind. I'm the one who raised him, so it was my responsibility to destroy the Bidoof who had become a fearsome god. He's strong though, and his constant onslaught of attacks are deadly. But I've been with Bidoof since the very beginning, and I knew his every move. With unparalleled timing and clutch movement, his health was getting lower. I'm sorry, Bidoof. This is the only way. And that is how I beat Pokemon Legends Arceus with only one little Bidoof who became way too powerful. Jump into this video next for more Pokemon content. Take care, leave a like, and an F in the comments for Bidoof, and I'll see you in the next video.